Hello everyone. Today we are going to go some through some commercial printing processes and we're going to understand the ways in which paper, board and plastics can be finished, particularly in regards to packaging. Now it's one thing to give you guys a static image to help jog your memory, but until you see the processes in action, you won't really understand. So I've provided you with a large selection of sourced videos that I found for you. Now you can watch them all before we get started. You could watch them all right at the end, but I would strongly recommend that you watch them as we go and I will give you opportunities to do so. So let's get started. Our first process is litho printing, also known as offset lithography. And lithography comes from litho meaning stone because they used to be carved into stone. So this works on the principle that oil and water do not mix, uh, particularly the oil that we have in oily inks. So the printing plates, which are flexible aluminium, and they are uh, very highly detailed and etched, uh, usually using computer uh, design. These have areas which absorb water and some which let the ink through. So it's most common uh, in uh, the most common form of printing and it's pretty much suitable for, for anything which is on paper um, or board uh, as long as it's in high volume. If there isn't in high volume, if it doesn't have thousands, tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of, uh, of uh, individuals, then it doesn't make it cost effective for the manufacturers or the designers. So I have a video for you next and you are going to focus on two main questions. So why is the litho printing machine divided into four chambers? And what are the names of the four colours that make up the prints? And what is the code that is given to them? Here's a big clue for you. Now this might look a little bit different to uh, the kind of colour uh, wheel which we tend to associate with in art, in primary colours, um, because this gives a different depth of colour. So there's a big clue for you. There is your video, so if you'd like to pause this now and go and watch that and then we'll come back and I'll see you in a second. Okay, so hopefully you've watched the video and now you know that the colours are cyan, magenta, yellow and black. We code these as CMYK. Now the K, although it happens to be the last letter in black which makes it convenient, the K actually stands for key as in the plate which is most vital. So you can see that once you, uh, once each plate has printed onto this exactly the same area on uh, the paper or the board, it gives you a composite image and it gives you a real depth of, uh, of tone as well. And when it prints, it actually prints in dots. Uh, I have a very fine a uh, very small magnifying glass um, at school. If I get the opportunity, I will lend it to you so you can see for yourself. But if you use it up against any printed material in a textbook or whatever, you will actually see it's made of tiny dots, thousands and thousands of dots. And obviously if you squint your eyes, you can resolve the image and you can see that it's an eye. That is what all printed material looks like up close. So moving on to flexography. So this is similar to offset lithography in some ways and very different in others. It does still consist of using rollers like offset lithography, um, but these are flexible printing plates. So they're not rigid aluminium. These are made from rubber or a flexible plastic. They, uh, flexography is also used for printing uh, continuous patterns. So rather than a single sheet at a time, like you have with offset lithography, this is for long rolls of paper or board. So this things like wallpaper, uh, as well as gift wrap. Now it's also, because it's flexible, the plates are flexible, it's really good for curved or undulating surfaces. So if you've ever seen gift wrap, which is has a slightly raised texture, a bumpy texture to it, for instance, um, that's a really good example um, where you might see it. Uh, but it's also for embossed 
packaging. I'm going to go through embossing very soon. Uh, it can also, however, be less accurate than offset litho printing because of the undulating surfaces, it, the uh, print plates don't always line up exactly. So sometimes it can be just like very slightly off. So it tends to be for slightly uh, cheaper processes. Oh, and the last thing uh, which you will see from the video is that they don't have to rely on CMYK. They can use pretty much any colours that they need for a particular package. Um, and the fact that you can also print on plastic is particularly key. So, for instance, the uh, plastic film that you might have that um, surrounds your block of cheese in your fridge at home, that would have been printed using flexography. So here's the video that you can watch. That's a good one. And pause the video now and I'll see you in a minute. OK, our last printing process is called screen printing. This is a small scale activity. So it's uh, because it can be done inexpensively. All that you need is a stencil, a uh, silk screen and a squeegee. Now, it tends to be done by individuals or small companies. Um, so, for instance, a local T-shirt um, designer um, who's making them uh, for, for his band or maybe a, a young artist who's making postcards um, to sell. So these are nice examples. So it, it usually uses a stencil um, made of board or, or card and you cut into it um, so that the uh, ink can go all the way through the stencil. Um, but you can also do it uh, using a process which involves something called photo emulsion. Uh, if you would like to look into that further, you are welcome to do so, but I just want you to focus on the stencil based one for now. So when you watch the video next, I'd like you to have a look at what the frames are made from and uh, how it actually lets the ink through. So here's the video for you. So we'll pause here and I'll see you back in a second. OK. So we are on to print finishes now. So we've done our three main printing processes, offset lithography, flexography and screen printing. And now we have three main print finishes. The first is varnish. So just like you would apply a varnish to wood furniture, for instance, we can use a special kind of varnish for magazines uh, and packaging that wants a typically more of a shiny surface or something that needs a little bit of water protection. So this oil based protection uh, is uh, often UV sensitive. So we have UV varnishes. So they use uh, they pass it under a UV lamp and it goes from being a, a semi liquid to being um, a solid layer instantaneously. It's very clever. There are three main finishes which are matte, satin and gloss. So when you've heard of a glossy magazine before, where it's very, very shiny on the front to really catch your eye, uh, so you, you're enticed to buy it, that is the, the shiniest finish. A matte finish is um, almost slightly textured, it almost absorbs the light, it doesn't have very much shine at all, and a satin is somewhere between the two. So I have this video for you to watch, it's quite short, it's slightly... Um, it's not the best uh, quality, but actually it shows you very well um, the, the process. So watch that one and join me when you're ready. OK, now to foil block printing, also known as hot foil stamping or hot foil printing. Different names, same process. This is one of my favourites. This is where you have a metallic foil. So you have a layer of metal. Um, on uh, backed onto paper or plastic and it can be uh, gold, it could be silver or it could just be a coloured metallic foil like red or purple or yellow. It's a permanent way of applying a really quality finish. So if you have uh, a, an amazing, uh, really expensive piece of packaging, you would uh, often add a little bit of hot foil uh, blocking to it. You can also use it on things like leather which gives it a beautiful um, finish because it's a, you've got a real contrast between the shine and, and the depth and, and the colour. It's lovely. So I have a video for you next 
you can have a look at what uh, she is making. So have a think about the purpose, some uses, some examples of hot foil blocking, hot fo or foil block printing. And uh, what's the downside? Have a little think about it. You might even need to watch the video twice to really have a think. If you're not sure, uh, bring it up with me in class. So here's the video. So we'll pause now and see you in a second. Okay, and our last uh, printing finish is embossing. So this creates a 3D effect on paper card or even sheet metal, very thin sheet metal, by compressing uh, between parts of a metal die. So similar to foil bot printing, which had one side of a die, this has two sides of a die. The die is a, uh, a, the proper term for what you might call a mould, but, but not quite. So this is a die. So the combination of the pressure of it being forced together and the heat that's applied through the, through the metal die makes the image permanent. It literally forces the fibres of the paper or the card to change shape and then stay fixed that way. It's used in industry to give a really expensive finish to packaging and other products. And it could even be used in conjunction with hot foil blocking. Um, it can also have functional reasons like braille. So on uh, pharmaceutical packaging, um, people who are uh, visually impaired need to be able to tell what they're taking. So that's what it has in the video for you next. But hopefully you can see how this side is raised, this side's indented, and ultimately you end up with this really lovely finish, which gives a really uh, professional quality finish. So here's the video for you, and I'll see you back in a sec. Okay, our last process. So we've been talking about ways to uh, give a, a lovely, coloured, luxurious, uh, textured finish, but ultimately the packaging needs to be cut out, doesn't it? So this is where die cutting comes in, different type of die this time. So it's used for paper and board, uh, particularly for packaging. So it's basically a well-engineered cookie cutter for making boxes. So you can have sharp blades, parts on it, which actually cut. You can have segmented blades on it, and these perforate. So if you've ever opened a box of tissues, you have to take out the tab from the center from which you actually remove the tissue. And it has that very pleasing sort of sort of feel uh, and pull um, because you, it's that's the perforation. Um, also between uh, sheets of toilet paper, that's perforated. Um, but there's also creasing bars which allow the box to bend. Um, and they can use CAD to design the net and cut it out. It can be machine or hand operated depending on uh, the finish and the uh, expense of the product. So here's the video for you. You can give this one a watch. Hopefully this makes sense. If you have any questions about it, please bring them to class and we'll move on. So to finish off before we recap, I would like you please to think about the following packages uh, and um, uh, packaging solutions. And I would like you to bring the answers to class. So which processes do you think were probably involved and why? So on the first one, we have a very expensive perfume uh, bottle and its packaging. So it's got a shiny surface. It's got a very good quality finish. Um, so have a little think about that. And on the other side, we have a yogurt pot, which is made of plastic and has a plastic film across the top of it. So think about that. You can make a note of it and we'll go through the answers in class. So overall, to recap, we've gone through offset lithography, which works on the principles that oil and water don't mix and it's suitable for anything in high volume. Flexography utilises flexible printing plates for continuously printed uh, patterns like wallpaper and can print on plastics and it's best for undulating surfaces, particularly if it's embossed. Screen printing is a small scale activity using a stencil and a silk screen. And we've gone through specialist print uh, finishes, UV varnishing, hot foil blocking and embossing, as well as die cutting. Uh, so thanks guys and I will see you in class. Bye.